Good morning, everyone. Yes, this is my first time na tindog ko sa inyo. Tubang, tanan. Um, before we start, I uh, want us to pray. Let's bow down our heads. Father in heaven, we are gathered here today to listen to your word, to listen to your voice. Let your message give us the conviction and the enlightenment that uh, we will also have the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the hearts to believe what you're going to say today. Uh, may your message be filled uh, with conviction to us, Lord. May your messenger be filled with uh, boldness to speak the truth and let your truth pierce our hearts so that our faith uh, will be made stronger. So, Lord, I pray that everyone who is giving attention to your word will have, uh, 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 will have their faith restored, their minds released from any kind of bondages. So, Lord, I just pray that you will move in each and every one's hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, I would like you to open it in, in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 14 to 29. You know, I tried to prepare a PowerPoint, but four slides lang. So, the means are four slides lang. Hindi na lang. But anyway, Mark chapter 9, verse 14 to 29. It says, And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, and scribes arguing with them. And immediately, all the crowd, when they saw him, when they saw Jesus, they were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And Jesus asked them, what are you, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has the spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and foams and grinds his teeth and, and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they could not. And Jesus answered, O oh, faithless generation, you know, I hope this will not be a description to us in this church. Jesus said, Oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, immediately it convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, since childhood. And it has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, the father asked, have compassion on us and help us. Now, this father asked Jesus if Jesus can do anything. He asked Lord, kung may mahimo ka, Lord, maluuhi, kaluuhi kami, bigay kami, kaluuhi, buligi kami. Why does this father uh, have doubt in his confession? Because he brought his son to the disciples. He brought his son in need to man. And man couldn't do anything. Ula may mahimo ang tao. And now he's speaking to Jesus. He's speaking to the Son of God. But because of his past experience with the disciples from man, he had this doubt in his heart. He had this doubt in his spirit. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible to those for one who believes. Do you believe that, church? That all things are possible to one who believes. Can you see, can you see the... The, the conversation between the Father and Jesus. Uh, the Father comes to Jesus. He said, Lord, if you can do anything. And then Jesus replied, if you can believe. Jesus throws it back to him. If you can believe. Now, do you believe? Now, the title of this message today is, Do You Believe? He said, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. 
And Jesus saw that the crowd came running together. He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse lying on the ground. So that most of them, the people said, he is dead. But Jesus, you know, sometimes in our lives, this should be uh, our confession if we are in an impossible situation. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but only through prayer. You know, this story in the moment of Jesus' life fascinates me because here comes a father who ran to the disciples and asked for help and they couldn't help him. Now came Jesus, yet the father still believes in Jesus. But he has this bit of a doubt in his heart, in his, in his soul, and he questions Jesus if he can do anything. Now, how many of us here today had a painful disappointment in the past that has affected our belief, our faith in Jesus? Have you been like this father who was in an impossible situation, yet you believe in God, but you don't believe that God can change something that can change your life, that can, God can turn your life around? God can change your situation. You've been praying and then you still have no answer. It's like you're only pray. Don't balik lang sa imobla. You pour out your faith. You cry out your tears. You have been hoping that things would have changed by now. Lord, you pray, but still nothing happens. Or you've been praying for your child. You've been praying for your spouse. You've been praying for your marriage. You've been praying for something for your husband that, that they will be saved. Yet they're still so far away to salvation. How many preachings have you heard through Sundays after Sundays? And you even said with a loud amen. And after you go out to church, you face the reality. You face your life. You don't believe the amen you said. You see, have you been in a situation like this that you said to our Father, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Lord, I believe you, but please, Lord, help me. Help my unbelief, help my doubt, take away my doubt. This leads me to believe that so many Christians in the church today who have faith in God but don't believe that God can do miracles in their lives. And we come to a point where we lose our faith in God because of our past experience. See church, you must not allow your past to limit your faith. Hindi, tapagid pagpasug tanya ang aton past to limit our faith. So do we believe what we say we believe? Or do we, or do we say one thing and then do another thing? You're just like the father in the story, he limits his faith in God because of his past experience and his confession is no longer in faith. His confession is full of doubt. Is our confession full of faith? Or do we no longer believe in the power of God? Because of the past experience, this father only see with sight. You know, there's a difference between uh, a sight and a vision. You see, your sight will focus, uh, it will focus on, on where you are right now. And your vision will focus when you, where you are going in God. Your sight will focus on the temporal, your, but your vision will focus in the eternal. And too many people have sight, but only few people have vision. You see, some of us, uh, some of you may say, I don't have a vision. Uh, or God has not given me a vision. You see, church, uh, our church, this church does not lack any vision. Amen. This church does not lack any vision. And, and I believe it's time for you to involve and take the next step. Align yourself in the vision of the church. Because in time, God will reveal to you His vision for you at a personal level because you aligned yourself in the vision of God in a corporate level. 
And as God cultivates you to become a mature Christian, activating your gifts, strengthening your faith in Him to readily receive the vision of God for your life. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible found in Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 13. Uh, some of you are familiar with it. When the Gentile Roman soldier approached Jesus and said, Lord, my servant is terribly ill. He is paralyzed, he's lying at home, suffering. Jesus said, I will come and heal. What fascinates me is that Jesus said to the Gentile Roman, the enemy of the Jews who govern over the Jews, Jesus submitted to the Roman soldier by replying, I will come. But the Roman soldier said, no, 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 no. You're not worthy to come to my house. Just say a word. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. Do you see the faith of that Roman soldier? And in the Bible, it says, and Jesus was amazed. He's like, what? I have not found this kind of faith in all of Israel. So it must mean that Jesus was looking for that kind of faith. And he found it. In the Roman soldier. I hope that God finds that kind of faith he's looking for for us or for in us today. I hope God finds that kind of faith in you today. So God is very pleased to those who has faith in him. And in fact, it is impossible to, to please God without faith. Do you believe in God? Do you believe that God can do something in your life? Do you believe that God can heal you? Do you believe that God can provide for you? What are the past experiences that is limiting your faith in Jesus today? And Jesus said to the Roman soldier, Go, let it be done for you as what you have believed. And the story, if we continue on, the story goes on where Jesus talks about the Jews and those who were born in the faith, how they will be left out outside of the kingdom where they will be, uh, there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth because they've made a decision not to believe in Jesus who he says he is. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 12 in the message translation it says, those who grew up in the faith but have no faith. Those who grew up in the faith but had no faith you can grow up your your whole life in church you can grow up uh, in church your whole life but you are in the zone of an unbelieving christian where you come to church out of a really religious obligation now you you hear the you hear the sermon you say amen but when you go out you don't believe the amen you said thank you And Jesus here uh, is challenging the Jews and the Pharisees after they have seen the faith of the Roman soldier. And Jesus now is challenging your faith to believe in him and believe what he can do to your life and how he's going to change your life with direction, with vision, with hope, and with the future. Amen? You see, each of us has been given a measure of faith. That's Romans 12, 3. Each of us has been given a measure of faith. Are we exercising that measure? Are we exercising our measure of faith? Do we believe in God? Are you a believing believer? In Acts chapter 14, Paul and Barnabas were storming this town. They were revolutionizing this town as they spoke in such a way that a great multitude of both Jews and Greeks believed in Jesus. But in verse 2 it says, But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. These are the Jews who understood the prophecy. These are the Jews who, who knew the promise. They knew that the Messiah is coming. But because Jesus has not fit in their knowledge of God, they did not acknowledge that Jesus is the sent one. And the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles against those who are preaching grace and those who are preaching Jesus. 
They knew the promise. They knew that there is the Messiah is coming. But when Jesus came, ang ila pag inchindi sa kinatawag ng ginu, hindi they 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 limit their faith in a box. That when when the Messiah came, ang box na natulok nila. So, but the believing believer break the box and believes whatever Jesus says, who He says He is. Do you believe that? Do you believe Jesus, who He says He is? What have, uh, what did Jesus say to you in your life, who He says He is, that you are now believing today? Or do we actually believe what we say we believe? In Matthew 11, where John the Baptist was locked up in prison because of his faith, when he got wind of what Jesus was doing, he sent for his disciples. Tawag yung disciples siya. Mig, 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 kadto di ba? Mig, dali ba? Kadto to be kay Jesus, be? Mangkota to siya. Are you the sent one? Or are we gonna wait for another? G John the Baptist. John the Baptist who paved the road for Jesus. John the Baptist who saw the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descending down, hearing the voice of God saying, This is my son whom I'm well pleased. John the Baptist, sang arap po sa chan sa mama niya, when Mary came to visit, uh, in, visit, John the Baptist, some scholars said John the Baptist backflipped in the womb of his mother. Right here. When he was being prisoned because of his faith, John the flipping Baptist had doubt in his heart. And he asked, are you the sent one or are we going to wait for another? But you know what Jesus said? Jesus said to his disciples, go back and tell John. Balik mo to, balik to ang si John. The blind see. The deaf hear, the mute speak, the dead are being raised, the lepers are clean. When John started to, to have doubt in his heart, when John's faith started to dwindle, Jesus pointed him back to what Jesus has already done. You know, right now, when your faith is starting to dwindle, Jesus is pointing you back to what he has already done in your life. Amen? Some of you may say it's easy for, for us to say, for me to say, why come on your experience? You know, before I end this, I want to share to you a, a testimony. And after that, I'm going to end. You know, last March 2020, it was the start of pandemic. And the lockdowns was being pushed through throughout the city. So good, the lockdown. And I recall, ako kagang ako nga wife, we were having a conversation about our financial budget. She was still working at uh, SM Regatta at that time. And I didn't have a fixed income. My wife told me that their company uh, will be giving out financial, but only one time. And after that, that's it. Nothing else will, will come. And she will only receive the last salary because of the policy of no work, no pay. We said, okay, okay, okay lang na, okay lang na, kayo do, isa lang to kabulan, natukli yung announcement eh. Isa lang to kabulan, isa, isa lang kabulan, okay na na. But little, we, little we, did we know the, the pandemic started extending and extending and extending and our budget came, became little and little, wala na kid. Being the head of the family, I struggled inside on how to provide for my family. So I prayed to God and I asked him for wisdom. I begged for him for provision. You know, my mom would sometimes, my mom and dad would sometimes invite me to pray, to pray for them for provision because I prayed, we prayed. Our neighbors received their uh, uh, government's uh, support. My family, family, my wife's family also received theirs. Wala kami, ah? And I applied three times. Three times. 
so that we would be helped. Wala git. Wala git nagabot. To be, to be clear, I'm not against our government, okay? I submit to our governing authorities. But it's just that of what happened, this disappointment became uh, a shadow of doubt in me. That my God, I have, have, now I have doubt that my God, is my God truly a provider? Because Lord, you have rejected me three times. We have, we have rejected to provide. From, we haven't paid our bills for about two months. Inside, I was crying out. So, sa tapos ng pandemic, okay na tanan, nalipas na to, nalipatan ko na. August 2021 came when my wife gave birth to our son. My son was in the, in the NICU, in the NICU for 12 days with ventilator, with the 25,000 per day. The bills kept, come, kept, kept coming in. And the weight of it began to shake my faith. And my past experience during the pandemic began to play at the back of my head. Is my God going to provide uh, to pay for this bill? Lord, are you going to provide uh, money to pay for this bill? Lord, what am I going to do? And my wife asked me, where are we going to get the money? He was teary-eyed and I, can't, and I couldn't resist it. So I said to her, God will pay for it. But inside, deep in my heart, I have that doubt. I have that doubt even when I said God will pay for it. I have doubt in my heart. I was limiting my faith in Jesus because of my past experience. But one evening, one evening, before my wife was going to be released uh, from the hospital, but our son was still going to stay for 10 more days, I broke down. I sat on the bed with my back against my wife and I cried to God, Lord, what is happening to us? Why is this happening to us, Lord? I did not want to pray, to be honest. I did not want to pray. Because I, in my heart, there was doubt that my God would provide for all, for the bills. I did not want to pray. But there's a voice inside me, that voice of faith saying, Jay, pray, pray, pray. Pray to the deliverer. Pray to God, your deliverer. Pray. I didn't pray. I started singing. I started singing to God. I started worshiping Him louder and louder. As I was singing, the song says, Jesus, you are enough. Jesus, you are enough for me. With nothing, I still have everything. Jesus, you are enough for me. I was praying deep inside my heart. You know what I prayed? I didn't pray for the provision to come. I didn't pray for the money. I didn't pray that God will pay for the bill. I prayed, Lord, you are enough. Your death on the cross is enough for me. Your resurrection is proof enough that you are God. And I can never forget that night what God said to me. He said, Jay, you have seen what your hand can do. You have seen what your hand can do. God is saying to you right now, you have seen what your hand can do over your situation. Now, you're going to see what my hand can do. That's what Jesus said to me. Now, you're going to see what my hand can do. And I began to cry even more. I cried because I started to embrace that my God will provide. I started crying because I embraced that God, God, that God will make a way for us. That there is nothing impossible for God. And I said to myself, I will not limit my worship because of my past experience. I'm going to worship God. You know, at that very moment, believe it or not, at that very moment, a random person messaged my wife. She said, a small amount of money to help you out. We don't know her. Our Facebook, on Facebook, di ba, my friends of friends now, my friends of friends, wala connection of anything. We don't even know her. We have not met her. 
she just messaged my wife and said, uh, we're going to uh, give you small about the financial help. And when my wife opened uh, her, uh, the message, we can't believe what we saw. The amount that she gave covered one-third of the bill. Imagine for 10 days, 25000 per day. One-third of the bill was covered. You know, people we don't even know and haven't met kept sending us support. My wife and I started to raise funds. Uh, some, of, some of you even bought some of the big goodies, goodies that we've, we've sold. Some even paid five to ten times more than the price that we are selling because you just want to help and we thank you for that. But that wasn't about us. It wasn't about the people who wanted to help. It was about God. It was about God wanting to show us who He is and who He says He is. It was about God, it's about God showing His mighty hand what, can, what, what He can do. It was about God uh, portraying His magnificent power that whenever He wants to do something in your life, no one can stop it. So, do you believe that He is in total control of your life? And He wants you to see the miracles in your life if you believe in Him. Don't be like the Jews. Don't be like the Pharisees who, who knows Jesus, who have faith in Jesus, but don't believe in the miracle of the working power of His name. Your know, friend, when your faith starts to dwindle, and you feel like nothing is happening in your situation, and you feel like Jesus hasn't done anything for you on your situation, look back on what Jesus did for you. You know, something in me wants us to worship right now. now I invite, I'm inviting the, the praise team. What has Jesus done to you? Church, what has, this, what has Jesus done to you, my friend? You know, God is, is challenging our faith today. God is challenging your faith today if you truly believe in Him. I don't know what you're going through. You may be in something that you are struggling with, that you want to get out of it. Now is the time. Now is the time that you start to believe in God, not just know Him. It's time that you start to believe in Him that He can turn your life around. If your faith starts to dwindle, look back to what Jesus has done. He died on the cross for your salvation. He sacrificed His life so that you can have a personal relationship with Him. He gave His all so that you could be set free from your sins. He rose from the dead so that you can believe in Him. That everything he has said and will do has the authority and power that cannot be denied. His promises is evident. It is fulfilling. It is true. Because of his resurrection power, friend, we have to remember that we must not allow our experience or our situation right now to limit our faith in Jesus. Because Jesus is who he says he is. He is faithful. He is just. He is powerful. He is almighty. No one can compare to his greatness. And what we have to believe, we have to believe in what he says he is. Because in Numbers 23, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and he not do it? Or has he spoken and will not fulfill it? You see, God is an everlasting God. God is true to his, to his word. God is true to his promises. No matter what the circumstance you are in, he is always God. He's always true to his promises. He's always good. We've seen God is good and His goodness runs after us. But do you believe it? Do you believe that the goodness, is, goodness of God is running after you? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Our God is an everlasting God. If he says who he is to you right now, believe it. Come on, let's rise up and just worship him for a moment. Because he is our savior. He is savior. He is deliverer. He is healer. He is provider. Oh, come on, church. Just lift up your voices to him. Let's worship him. Let's give him praise. Oh, don't limit your faith because of your past experience. Don't limit your worship in God. Don't limit it. Pour out your faith and worship to God. Pour out your faith in Him. Believe in Him. Believe in what He can do to you today. Believe in what He can do to your family, to your children, to your spouse, to your business, to whatever you are going through right now. Believe that God will turn your life around. Oh, believe in Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. You will be healed. You will be restored. I pray that your faith will be restored today and that you will come back to Jesus begging for your faith to be restored and that you want to live your life to Him for the rest of your days. Oh, hallelujah to you, Lord. Come on, just let's worship Him. Let's worship Him. Let's lift up our voice.